Hello everybody, thanks for joining me again. Today we're just going to have a look at channel delay. So channel delay is to, to access it you just need to press this little uh, D button down in the bottom right hand corner and it'll pop this open and what this lets you do is it lets you shift a channel or a group, anything you like, uh, backwards or forwards in time in either milliseconds or samples which can be very very useful. You can do a lot of sort of more technical stuff with it if you like, but I like to use this in a creative way. So let's quickly have a listen to two clips with the exact same thing, apart from one has some channel delay happening and one doesn't. So on this second clip I showed, there's no channel delay whatsoever. And if we focus on the hi-hats, now listen to this one and focus on the hi-hats again. It's quite different. So over in the first one, if we just take our closed hat on its own, and then listen to the tambourine layer over the top of it. We can hear them separately, but they're happening at exactly the same time and they do kind of smear each other slightly and it's just not ideal basically. And so uh, you, you could have a worse situation where you have two sounds that are very, very similar in terms of spectrum and this would be an even bigger problem. Rather than trying to fix this with like EQ and stuff, we can just shift these sounds around. So the first thing I would do, something I really like to do, is shift my main hi-hat backwards a few milliseconds. So let's just go minus four. Four is just an arbitrary number, but let's see how it sounds in context with the kick and bass. Well, firstly, let's set it to zero and then I'll change it to four. Okay, so yeah, as you can hear, when the hi-hat comes in, it kind of smears the transient of our bass line. So let's try it again, but with minus four. Just by shifting that back a few milliseconds, we've really opened up the transient on the bass. It's much more clear what's the hi-hat and what's the bass transient. Also, uh, I really enjoy this effect that it has when the close eye hat happens a few milliseconds early. Kind of gives this like driving sense to the track and makes the drums sort of suck you in is the only way I can put it. Okay, so then with our tambourine layer, this isn't happening at the same time as the hi hat anymore, which is brilliant, but it is happening at the same time as our bass transient. So let's shift this forwards four milliseconds. So within eight milliseconds, all three transients are going to happen. So the close hi hat, then the bass transient, and then the tambourine. And know that we can hear all the different transients quite clearly now. Super, super useful. Okay, so another thing to note is that always I will do a bit of shifting to my bass note. I never ever go by the grid. I always go, go by ear. And uh, let's have a listen to this. So I think the bass is actually happening slightly late. So let's take it back about three milliseconds. It's very, very subtle difference, but to me, it's much more flowy and it kind of locks in once we get the timing just right for the bass with the kick. It's just sort of listen for it, you'll hear it uh, sort of almost click into place and the flow will improve. 
Okay. And that doesn't mean to say that you it may just be in the right timing to start with. That that totally happens, but it's worthwhile trying it and then make a note of where your uh, transient's happening. You don't actually really need to know uh, as long as you use your ears and maybe a oscilloscope if you like and just look where the transients are actually happening. Okay, so there we go. Just sort of gaining headroom and also gaining clarity between the different transients is very easy with this channel delay. Okay, so that's all for today. Very simple trick. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I shall see you next week.